Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is March 21st and this is my weekly shop update. So in case you haven't heard yet, in like a week and a half, yeah, in a week and a half, I will be in Atlanta at the Woodworking Shows with a bunch of other content creators here on YouTube. We'll be having a booth there at the Woodworking Show there in Atlanta. That is April 1st to the 3rd. If you're in the area, you're planning to travel to the area, be awesome for you to stop by and meet all of us. It's going to be a great time. For all the details about that, you can find that over at videowoodworkers.com. And speaking of travel, my wife, my son, and I will also be traveling to Toronto at the end of May, the 20... Hold on. You would think I write these things down. The 28th through the 4th. Uh, to visit family and while I'm there I am planning or well, I'd like to do a meetup so if you're in the Toronto area uh, just let me know if you'd be interested in attending something like that I'd like to just kind of gauge the interest and the number of people that would be interested in going more so to just kind of figure out a good place to have it <laughs> based on the number of people that would like to attend so that's gonna be a fun trip I have a fun a few a few fun um, outings planned as well while I'm there to create a few videos for everyone else who isn't going to be there. <laughs> and this week, the, was it the 20, 20th through the, bad with dates today, the 20th through the 26th is Get Woodworking Week. It's a week for you to get off your butt, get out to the shop and get some woodworking done. And if you have someone that you can take with you out to the shop, teach them the craft, this is the week for that. <laughs> so if you can, try and do something this week. Uh, this week, my wife has been out in the shop with me and we have been, well, she's been carving a spoon. This is as far as we've gotten so far. This is, to, uh, what, two nights worth? And we'll probably finish up tomorrow. So I'll give you a little preview of what it looks like. I think it's just awesome. I love the shape, that handle is really unique and really skinny and it feels kind of cool in my hand. I think she did a fantastic job with this. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all finishes up, but it's looking good. We're doing a video on that, so look for the video on Lindsay's first spoon carving experience. <laughs> it should be fun. It's a fun one. <laughs> so let's get into some viewer projects. This first project is an essential oils cabinet from Jim. The case of the cabinet is made from cherry and the backboards are made from maple. The shelves are set into blind dados and the drawer is dovetailed. So I really like the way that Jim used the wire screen or the wire mesh for the front panel. It gives a really nice look. I think the, the look of the metal against the cherry and the maple in the back really has a nice look to it and really complements each other really well. Jim did a series of videos on his YouTube channel while making this cabinet, so you can check those out as well. This next project comes from Graham. This is a walnut ping pong paddle. He says he's a 16-year-old self-taught woodworker, and he's only been woodworking for a few months, but he loves it. This was his first ever ping pong paddle that he made, and it's made from an old pallet that he cleaned up and some walnut. Awesome work on that, Graham. I'm looking forward to seeing what... Uh, what you make next. <laughs> next, we have a homemade chainsaw mill by Craig. This makes me really happy. <laughs> Craig said it's all built from mild steel and TIG welded together. He lives up in Canada and he says with the exchange rate, he was able to build it for about a quarter of the price you'd have to pay if he had purchased it. He tried it out with his MS-260 on a black cherry tree and after that test was, was a success, he's going to be using a 440 for the rest of his milling. He works at a golf course with 400 acres of property, so there's an abundance of dead standing hardwoods, but unfortunately no walnut. <laughs> <laughs> this last project is from Adrian. This is a small vanity. He said this was made out of a Kari bowl blank. Awesome work on that, Adrian. That thing looks sweet. <laughs> So what have I been up to this week? Well, I did start on my baseboard install and I've got, what, one and a half baseboards installed at this point. <laughs> That's all I had time for. But the process went really easily and I'm really happy with the results. So I made a little block of wood that was my half inch offset and I mounted a utility knife blade to that 
and that is what I use to scribe the floor onto the baseboard after I just set the baseboard up against the wall. I use some uh, masking tape on there as well just to make it really easy to see the line. I used a bandsaw with a table tip to about 5 degrees to cut a back bevel as I was making that cut. I stayed a little bit away from the line at first and then I cleaned it all up at the bench with a hand plane. And since I used a knife, it was really easy to see that scribe line as I was planing. Because as you start planing and as you get really close to the line, the fibers really on the top of the line start to fray and kind of flake away and you can really see exactly when you hit that line. So it was actually a really easy process. I just haven't had a whole lot of time to work on that. <laughs> the nice thing is I have a workshop here so I can bring the baseboard after I scribe it down here, clamp it to my bench and just work away. And I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a good time. Well, it was all right. <laughs> so the other part of the trim project was the casings. And I got that all mostly all run this week. I have one last pass to make on it but that went really easily as well. Let me show you my setup for running the casing. There's a few things going on with the setup and probably the biggest thing is this tall auxiliary fence, which is also sacrificial. It does two things for me. It allows me to clamp a feather board up here so I can hold the, the, uh, the blank down to the table as it's being run through the bit. And it's also a zero clearance sacrificial fence as well. So I clamped this to the, the shorter fence and then I pivoted the whole thing into the bit so that the bit cut a perfect profile into the sacrificial fence here. That way, as the piece is running through the bit, the whole piece is supported by the fence itself as the cutter is cutting. And that's going to help to eliminate a lot of, actually eliminated pretty much all tear out on this piece because the wood fibers are completely supported up against this, um, the fence. I also have a double feather board here and that's positioned to put pressure at the bottom and at the top of the piece of molding. And probably the most important part of this whole process is on the molding itself. So on this profile here, the profile starts here and ends at the top of this bead here, but I have this extra bit of material here at the end or at the bottom that I left. And that is so that as the molding is going through the router, the feather boards actually have something to push against on the bottom because I made this mistake the first time I did this, the last time I made these moldings, is I didn't put this little piece of material down here. And as you're feeding this through, there's nowhere for the feather board to press up against the fence. And then the whole thing will just chatter the whole way through. So, so far this is three passes and I am pretty much to full depth. I'm going to do one last pass, a really fine pass, and that should help to really eliminate some of the chatter marks in through here and make the sanding and cleanup a lot easier. And the last thing I did this week was a little more slabbing. I still had the sharp chain on my smaller saw from that comparison video I did, so I figured I might as well use up the rest of that chain until it's dull again, because, you know, why not? <laughs> so I know a few people are wondering what the, the 460 would do as far as cut speed when the log was at its widest. So at the longest, the widest part of the log, the 460 made the cut in 11 minutes. And that was uh, like 18, 20 inches wide. So 11 minutes for a 10 foot long cut, which puts it right at the same speed or a little bit slower than the 090 from that comparison video. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. And then I had to go stack all the slabs, but you know, that's my workout for the week. <laughs> So I think that's about all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I showed today, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.